Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I believe we are all born with an ambition. It takes an ambition for a baby to walk, crawl, or talk. Throughout our life, we set up goals to achieve. Some may be educational, some personal, some professional. Over the years, you look back and realize some of those goals never come through. Some become dreams, some forgotten dreams. Maybe because of lack of resource, lack of time, maybe, or lack of opportunity. I believe most of us know where we are and where we need to go. Not all of us is willing to take that journey to where you need to go. But I'm here to tell you this. Regardless of who you are or what you may be facing, you can do anything you set your mind to. So let me tell you a story about a young man who faced challenges. when all challenges, all odds was against him. I was born in a democratic republic of the Congo, formerly known as Zaire, a French-speaking country torn by decades of civil and political unrest, poverty, corruption, although he has tremendous resources. Beyond high school level, the education system was very poor. So it was customary for parents who had the mean to send the high school grad overseas for a better education. My father, he was a colonel in the Congolese military. He died, I was in high school. So my mom had to carry on the tradition. But with 18 siblings, this is an extremely difficult task for a stay-at-home mom I'm sure you can appreciate that. Over a couple of years, I see our living condition drastically went down from three meal a day to one meal a day. And I remember walking some time miles from school, going to my father's tomb. I would stay there crying for hours before going home. Then in 1996, we had a break. A friend of mine applied for, on my behalf, applied for the U.S. diversity lottery visa. This is an immigration program where it allows citizens from uh, other nation to come to the United States with a legal status, legal residence. Provided me those requirements, such as having high school diploma at a minimum or being in good health. I was selected in November 1996 I left Congo. I arrived in the United States with great expectation from my friends, siblings, and mom. I was found lost. I found myself lost in this country uh, I only know little about. I was broken. I was sad. I feel lonely. But I knew the journey I was about to take would be faced with challenges and obstacles to meet my goals, and to help my family. Challenge that I would never imagine one day I would stand up and talk about it, that I overcome. I didn't have money to go to college. I did not speak English. I didn't have any talent, any special skills, so the only job that I could acquire at that time was the one that gets like a four to five dollar an hour. And I quickly realized that with this space, it was going to be extremely difficult to reach my goal. Then I learned that the military can pay for college. I only need to pass the military entrance exam, the ASVAB. So I went to my job and requested a part-time schedule. I had enough time now available. I'll go to the library and study for the ASVAB. I set up a schedule. Monday to Wednesday, I'll study English. And the rest of the week, I was studying math and science. I met the library in my college. I would go every single day the library was open. And I knew having a goal without a deadline 
is as good as a dream. So I set a goal. I set a goal to enlist in the military within six months. And the day I will graduate from my college library will be the day I will pass my ASVAB. My greatest challenge at the time was English. So on my first paycheck, I bought me a French-English dictionary. I carried a dictionary with me everywhere I went. And outside the library, there was a little park. A lot of homeless used to come and hang out. I needed to practice my oral communication and my listening. And they are the only one who had time for me. And I spent time talking to those homeless, practicing with them. In a way, they become like my tutor. In an evening, I would listen to the Western country music. I thought the lyric was a little bit easy, understand? That guy just come from Africa, right? <laughs> okay? I thought the lyric was easy. Now it's time to, now it's time to choose a branch of service. So I went to the recruiter building. I saw the Navy, the Army, the Marines, and I didn't know which one to pick. And then I saw it right there at the door, hem high. I knew the Air Force was talking to me. So I contacted the recruiter. I test and pass my ASVAB. I enlist in the Air Force, my college library I paid off. So in December 1997, I was sent to basic training, Lackland Air Force Base. Once again, I found myself lost outside my comfort zone. I thought I made some improvement with my English, talking to my friend, the homeless, until I was put in a mix of young men and women from all corners of the country with different accents. I thought I was done. So, first, they took my French English dictionary from me. I was not allowed to keep it with me. And I didn't have any translator. I wish I had one. I only have one thing left for my defense, was my African smile. <laughs> for some of you have seen the movie Coming to America with Eddie Murphy, right? This is a smile where you show your teeth, your gum, and you nag as an agreement, <laughs> like this. <laughs> I feel sorry about myself sometimes. <laughs> so one day there was this young airman come to me and ask if I seen the broom. I didn't know what the broom was. I don't have my dictionary. So what do I do? I gave him the African smile. <laughs> <laughs> so he said, where is he? I look at him again. I gave him another smile. <laughs> that poor boy looked confused and left. <laughs> Couple of minutes later, he came to me and he tapped me on the shoulder. He didn't know who I was. Probably he didn't know that he only asked me the question. Maybe for another question. As I was turning slowly to give him my awesome African smile, he said, hey, you again, never mind, and walk away. <laughs> and that the challenge I was facing was not just from the outside, but also inside. I had the feeling that everybody there was better than me. And sometimes I think like, I thought to myself, it's just a matter of time before someone realized that I do not belong here. And every day that has passed by in basic training was a survival for me. It was a day that I have to survive. And the day I wore this uniform, I was in tears. Tears that I have accomplished something enormous. A young man from Africa wearing this uniform in the greatest country in the world. And I said to myself, today, if I get kicked out, it's okay. I'll let my family know, 
I will let my friend know that I was a member of the greatest military there is. I have the uniform and an MTAP to prove it, in case you wonder. <laughs> Needless to say, I graduated basic training, and I went on graduating also tech school. Not because I was the brightest, no. Not because I was the fittest, no. Because there's so much to lose. And failure was not an option. I was an Airman basic when I went to my first duty station at our Fit Air Force Base. The first year, I was not allowed to take any college classes until I completed my uh, career development courses, the CDCs. So I used my free up time, like weekends, and also after work to go to the local library, study for the college level examination program, CLEP. I CLEP 29 credits and completed the CDC three months before they were due. I thought it was a good start. So I'm rolling in a local community college, but obtaining an engineering degree while well, active duty is very, very difficult. We PCS, we deploy, we change the station. Sometimes the school that you go to doesn't have that program. So I applied for the reserve officer training school twice. And I was denied twice. I didn't want it to discourage me. So I pressed on with my classes. Eventually, I obtained my Bachelor of Science in Electrical Engineering. I was 10 years in the service. I already had, I started as M and basic. I met technical surgeon at seven years mark. And at the 10 years mark, I applied for the officer training school. I was selected and commissioned as a second lieutenant. Couple years later, I was offered with an opportunity to go to uh, AFIT for my advanced uh, degree at the Air Force Institute of Technology. A colleague of mine approached and said, hey, Patrick, I advise you against it. Don't go to AFIT. I said, why? AFIT is a very difficult program. Should you fail, you jeopardize your career. He was right. But this young airman didn't know me. He didn't know me very well. See, I was not afraid to fail. No. I've been through a lot. I gained strength and courage. But what I was afraid was not to try. So I tried. And I was selected. And I completed the program. And I got my master in environmental engineering. Understand that it takes more than courage, persistence, and motivation to reach your goal. There's a team of family, friend, supervisor, commander, wingman who provide support, environment for success, and opportunity. For that, for all of you, I say thank you. So I have resolved to give back. I talk to the airmen. I motivate them to set their goal very high and to meet the, to face the challenges. I also use my culture and language skill to help in several missions in Africa, in the United States, and some other part, like in the Haiti with the earthquake. Recently, in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, when I was able to avert an international incident between our military forces, the US, and the Congolese military forces because of my background, I understand the military over there. I also use my technical skill as an environmental engineer. While I was stationed at, uh, while I was assigned to the FRL. I did some research on uh, water decontamination using the UV lights and advanced oxidation method. Later on, I provide recommendations to, uh, for the portable water system that was used in several locations, in deployed locations in Africa. America we have so much and an overflow of resources and an abundance of untapped potential. I was able to touch a small portion of it and that make me who I am today, a major in the United States Air Force that I'm 
try to wear this uniform. Some of us that are born here sometimes do not see or seize those opportunities. And the biggest mistake that we can do as an individual, as an organization, and as a country is to be complacent. Is to stop striving for those very things that make this country the greatest nation in the world. I assure you, the right that was given to me to stand here before you was not an easy one. I had to try harder. I had to dig deeper. I have to pray a little bit more often than my peer. Here I stand before you and telling you again, regardless of who you are or what you may be facing, with just a little bit of faith, a handful of persistence, and a bucket of ambition and a courage to take the first step. There's no ocean you cannot conquer. No mountain you cannot move. No height you cannot reach. So, FRL, that time higher. Thank you.